On this episode of Putting Possibility in Practice, we discuss nationwide health information networks, how they were established, what they are, and how to find your state's HIN, plus how practices and providers can qualify for federal programs and payouts when they adopt certified EHR technology and use it to achieve specified objectives. This is Putting Possibility in Practice, and it starts right now. I'm Joe Agostinelli, Social Media Manager at Greenway Health, and this is our episode of Putting Possibility into Practice. As I mentioned on the intro, we're talking about health information networks and integration of products and solutions on those networks. And I welcome in Sonia Chambers, who is the Executive Director of the West Virginia Health Information Network. And Sonia, thanks for joining me. Happy to be here. Sonia, let's first talk about for listeners who may not know or realize what exactly is a health information network when we're talking about that. So a health information network is a way that um, all of the different electronic health records can uh, communicate with each other. Um, you know, I use the analogy of uh, sort of a uh, of how banking has evolved. So, regardless of where you are in the United States or even in a foreign country, you can go and use your debit card or your credit card, and uh, it is really seamless. In healthcare, that's been a little bit slower to come along. So that if you're at um, one hospital in a town, but then say you go to a different hospital for another service, um, they, it's very hard for the second hospital to be able to see what has happened at the prior one. Um, or if you are working with uh, you know, an elderly patient or an elderly parent and you go to the physician office with them, they may have a, a whole uh, tray of medications and trying to be able to sort through those is really difficult. Uh, but if you are able to, um, to look at that information in the health information exchange, it makes that a lot easier for the patient, and it's a lot better patient care. And, Sonia, how long has the West Virginia Health Information Network been around, and what are some of the key milestones since its inception? So the West Virginia Health Information Network has been around uh, for about 12 years now. We started um, the Office of the National Coordinator in the federal government was giving you know, grant money to help health information exchanges get started um, at, because the federal government saw the real value of making sure that hospitals and providers could communicate um, well with each other across the whole spectrum. And uh, so the WIN, as we call it, started in West Virginia about 12 years ago. Um, we had a, I think, an older version uh, of a vision of HIE, which was that we were going to create this giant data repository that everybody was going to be so anxious to, you know, stop what they were doing, have a username and password and log in and look at all the information. Uh, we were doing that for a while um, and then really determined that that was not the best way to move forward, that really what clinicians were interested in was more discrete data elements that were immediately actionable, that that's really what they needed um, at the point of care, but then all the rest of the information could be available if needed. Um, we've really undergone a lot of evolution in the last couple of years. Um, we were in state government. And we are now a nonprofit. We have a bit of a different board of directors. We have partnered with the HIE that serves Maryland and D.C. called CRISP. We're sharing their technology infrastructure because that brings about a lot of economies of scale. And uh, we, as a small state, really get to benefit from their, um, their expertise and their um, larger technology. And we're really now focusing, as I said, on providing more discrete data elements that are immediately actionable. So our technology stack is a bit different. Um, it looks very flexible. Uh, and we're really focusing on being able to develop, to deliver, to kind of push um, immediate uh, actionable elements like that your patient was in the emergency room the night before or at an urgent care center to folks um, in fairly real time or once daily. 
And do health information networks vary from state to state? They, yes, they do. It's funny. People say when you've seen one health information exchange, you've seen one. Um, there, uh, most states have at least one. Several states, the bigger states particularly, have several. Um, in West Virginia, we're a small state, so we just have one. Um, the, what the, whether the HIE is uh, for profit or non profit or in state government, a number are housed um, or, or started in state Medicaid programs. Uh, varies from state to state. The type of services that are offered um, uh, varies from state to state. And, uh, you know, the sort of the funding mechanism, um, a lot, there's a lot of variability across um, HIEs. And I think you touched on this uh, just a little bit in your last response, but uh, how do HINs work with providers and medical practices to improve patient care? Well, I think one of the most important things is being able to provide um, information, valuable information about that patient, regardless of where they have been and what, you know, medical record system um, other, uh, other members of the care team have. Um, so there are a whole lot of ways. Um, one of the, a lot of it helps with care coordination. And as we all move to value-based payment, it is more and more important to be able to coordinate that care. So, for instance, if you are a primary care practice, um, your patients may call you and let you know where that they were in the emergency room. Um, they may let you know that they've been admitted to the hospital or that they um, have received some other kind of care, but more often than not, they don't. Um, and physicians, uh, particularly primary care physicians, are increasingly really being required to follow up with that patient and get them back in for um, care. Uh, sometimes you get a claim. Sometimes you get a fax from the hospital. Uh, what health information exchanges are able to do is to know about that in real time and then be able to give a primary care physician, um, you know, first thing in the morning, the whole list of things that had happened um, with uh, that, pra that practice of patients the day prior. Um, we can also do that in real time. So if there's a real um, high needs chronic care uh, chronic patient that you need to manage, we can let you know that in real time. Uh, we can also let folks know um, if there was, uh, in West Virginia, this is particularly important, whether there was a suspected overdose um, in the emergency department for one of that practice's patients. Um, so there is a whole lot of ways that we can really help with um, care management and that continuity of care. We can also help you know, help a practice know about the full spectrum of services that are um, delivered to that patient, um, regardless of, you know, where, where they've gone. And we can increasingly provide that at the point of care. And uh, Greenway Health obviously provides a number of solutions uh, for medical practices and electronic health records and practice management. Mm -hmm. Um, and we discussed uh, a little bit uh, prior to the recording as to uh, the integration. How does how does uh, Greenway Energy interact with HINs? So there are a variety of ways. Um, one of the we have created um, with the folks at at Greenway, at both Energy and Prime Suite, a way for practices to publish all of that information to us um, because, you know, an HIE is most beneficial when the, when the, the greatest number of providers in an area are contributing data so that other people, other um, part, members of the care team can see that information. So we've created um, with Greenway a, a seamless way for all of that information to be sent in real time. Uh, the uh, the fact that somebody was at the practice and then um, the CCD or continuity of care document that is associated with that visit. And we have a number of practices in West Virginia who are seamlessly connected to us in that way, publishing to us. We can provide the information back to Greenway practices. Um, we are increasingly, right now, it doesn't go seamlessly into the into the record, but we are continuing to work with Greenway on ways to be able to do that. Um, right now, those are all of that information is available through our our separate tools. 
um, but we want to continue to work to be able to provide that sort of very seamlessly so that practices don't have to leave their workflow. And what benefits are available for practices and providers if they have not yet adopted EHR technology? Oh, yeah, I mean, I think the benefits are are really great. It's uh, the ability to have all of that in one place, the ability to um, uh, look at different metrics, um, to be able to, instead of having to really sort through paper, um, hope that files don't get misplaced or misfiled, uh, to be able to um, look at all of those things seamlessly and to be able to share that information um, with uh, other parts of other members of the care team for each patient. Well, Sonia, I want to thank you for all the great information that you provided to our listeners of the podcast today. And uh, for more information on the uh, West Virginia Health Information Network, you can visit their website at www.wvhin.org. Once again, Sonia Chambers, the Executive Director the West Virginia Health Information Network. Thanks again for joining me. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And now I am joined on the podcast by Dr. Tom Bowden of Charleston Internal Medicine. And Dr. Bowden, I thank you for taking time out of your uh, busy day to join me on the podcast. Well, thank you very much for asking. I appreciate it. And Dr. Bowden, uh, just for our listeners, can you give a little background on your practice, uh, where you're located, the specialties, and, and the size of the practice? Sure. Um, Charleston Internal Medicine, I started, oh, about 18 years ago. Um, just out of residency, started the practice. Um, we had one other uh, doctor join me at that time, about a year into it. Um, and then it's since that time, it's kind of grown. Um, we currently have uh, four physicians. We have uh, five uh, mid-level providers. Uh, nurse practitioners and physician's assistants. Um, so we're mostly internal medicine and family practice. So we, we do general family practice, um, general care, uh, primary care. We have a lot of, you know, we do a lot of testing in-house and stuff like that. So we're pretty self-sufficient. Um, we actually have our own hospital uh, service at this time. So that's pretty much what we do day in and day out. We enjoy it. And you uh, mentioned there starting starting your practice out of your residency. So what was it like to uh, to start your own practice? And, and did you have advice from others? Where you know how did you get how did you uh, how did you know you wanted to go into your own practice? Well, yeah, the advice from others was was don't do it. Um, <laughs> in West Virginia, in West Virginia at that time, there was a big you know the malpractice thing was kind of going on and everything and. But then again, a lot of the doctors in my residency that I worked with, a lot of the specialists said, look, we need primary care help. So they really, really encouraged me to, to do primary care. There used to be a primary care group here that was ran by the hospital, but um, it kind of just faded over time. Um, so really it was my attendings that actually in residency that encouraged me and kind of helped me along and, you know, I was able to visit their offices and talk to their practice managers and, and so they gave me a lot of good advice and kind of encouraged me to do it. And so my, with my the grace of my wife and the help of her, we um we got a we got a name and we got a we got a phone number and uh, we started taking calls. So that's how it started. Great, and it's and it's grown since then. And um, it's us on a little bit, but talk about the benefits of, of a practice utilizing a a health information network like the West Virginia Health Information Network? Yeah, you know, the West Virginia Health Information Network is, you know, um, is absolutely, you know, needed. You only have to have something like that to connect. There's so many different isolated fractions to somebody's, you know, general health care. And as as primary care, you know, we, we need to know it all. We kind of need to be able to piece it together and answer questions and and being able to help the patient navigate um, through through all the avenues of care, whether you know whether it's a, a testing, uh, a specialist, you know, emergency room, uh, acute visit. We, we have to kind of be connected with all that, and and that is the one of the only ways we have 
to do that now. Um, here in West Virginia, it's still kind of in its infancy, um, but you know it's rapidly progressing, and I have high hopes that it'll help us take better care of patients in the future. And talk about the uh, EHR functionality for HINs and how solutions that you utilize from Greenway Health interact with the uh, health information network. Right. Well, like I said, you know, it's still kind of at the beginning. Um, right now, Greenway has a couple um, different um, interactions that we use. The uh, ENN service, which is the, um, the electronic kind of notification. Um, so if the West Virginia Health Information Network um, is connected with uh, another entity, um, then actually we can get that notification. So we have that uh, functionality. There's also some lab values that, that we actually get in through the lab that we are actually connected to. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, in the, in the future, in the near future, um, there, there will be some more direct kind of connections between the health information network and our software. Um, so that is, you know, hopefully right around the corner, and that will really, really be a game changer in helping uh, treat patients, you know, help them save costs, decrease duplication of services, and more timely access to records. And, and with patient care, that's that's what we need. And I, I hear that you were one of the, the first practices on an EHR in, in your area, and sounds like you're uh, usually right on the, the cutting edge as we talk about the future and, and integrating solutions. So going back to the time of uh, getting on an EHR, what was that experience like? Uh, you know, uh, you know, I read a whole lot about it, and um, um, and uh, at that time, I was actually there was it was just me and the practice. Um, I actually did it before the other physician joined. Um, you know, you you know, to stay up to date on the national trends and and stuff like that. And they, they were doing it in other areas, so I really just started looking into it. What is it all about? And trying to learn as much as I can. So you know. You, found some of the big names, you did some demos online, um, you know, then you reach out to the actual companies and, and you talk to them and then they bring in and they, they, you know, demonstrate it for, you know, I did it for all my staff. I always thought it was important for um, all, all the staff to actually look at it because everybody will be using it. And at that time it was, you know, it wasn't real scary to me, um, even though I'm not a computer person at all, actually. Until I opened up my practice, I never even owned a computer. I don't know if I should say that, but I never even owned a computer at my house. But then when we opened up, when I opened up the practice, of course we we had the uh, we had the uh, computers for the scheduling and stuff like that. But we had I had paper charts, um, so I still had paper charts, but we still needed computers for the billing and stuff like that. So it, it was a it was a transition that I thought was fairly an easy decision. Great. Well, uh, thank you for all the uh, great information and uh, appreciate you taking the time to uh, join our podcast today. And uh, best of, of luck to you in the practice as you continue to uh, serve your community. Thank you very much. And once again, that's Dr. Tom Bowden, Charleston Internal Medicine. Uh, I am Joe Agostinelli, the Social Media Manager here at Greenway Health, and this has been another episode of Putting Possibility into Practice, the podcast from Greenway Health. And for more information on the products and services that Greenway Health offers for providers and their practices, you can visit our website at www.greenwayhealth.com. And I invite you to subscribe to our podcast. We're on a number of platforms now. You can find us on Apple iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Libsyn, and SoundCloud. 